In this video, we're going to be taking a look at overlapping date ranges in SQL Server and figuring out how to interrogate them to see if they overlap. We just had this scenario come up in a real world client where they're running SAP and OMP. SAP has two different ways to put in calendar exceptions. One way is at the plant level and at the plant level, you put in your exception and at the machine line level, you can also put in calendar exceptions. And these exceptions basically represent downtime or time when you don't want to plan for production to happen and therefore it impacts the forecast and production schedule, so on and so forth. So we had to basically write queries against the data to find out if we had calendar exception overlays because these were causing kickbacks and problems with our interface. Well, hey y'all, Billy Thomas here, and I'm gonna be walking you through the solution to today's conundrum of dealing with overlapping date ranges and how to query them or maybe write a case statement so that you can do a true false or pass fail on those. Now, if this is something that you wanna see more of, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel here at All Joy Data and go ahead and click the little bell as well so you get notifications as the videos are released. Now let's get to work. One of the first things we gotta do is understand the scenario we're dealing with. And I like to use Excel a lot to get a pictorial in my mind of what's happening with the data so I understand the business requirement and then get down into the SQL. So I've put together a spreadsheet with a couple different examples of ways that I think that this will work and um, some expected outcomes of that data. And so if you look right here at the top of the spreadsheet, I've got a little area that represents our plant calendar exceptions. So in that table, there's a row in there that says yearly maintenance is gonna happen July 1st through the 8th, and then we're gonna be off for Christmas on the 25th. So regardless of whatever's happening in this plant, we're gonna be, we want those calendar days marked off and don't you know plan for any production don't plan for you know any type of demand being pulled from this plant now i'm going to represent the other table which is at the line level so within the plant at the line level we have another table that allows us to individually take lines down right so capacity for line one line two so on and so forth or you know another way of saying that might be machine depending how a facility is set up. And I think I used machine actually in this example. And so what I did was I wanted a bunch of different scenarios to help me be able to test the logic that I do for these overlapping dates to make sure the logic is working right. So I've got these two dates out here from a plant perspective. And then I wanted to do these different scenarios around those dates so that I could check to see if the past fails that I was going to get back are accurate. So I've got something where there's a motor upgrade. Now it happens between the start and the finish date of this guy. So I can see, well, that should fail because that's overlapping. I've got a thermal scan that's nowhere close to anything, you know, on the plant calendar. So that should pass. I've got a line changeover that starts on the 30th of June. Well, that day is okay, but it goes into uh, July 1st. Now we've got an overlap. So this guy, this entry should flag as a fail and so on and forth or so on. I can't speak so on and so forth. We've got an on the end date before the start date on the start date after the end date and crossing end date. So, I want to test my SQL before I get to real production data on some test data of every scenario that I could think of to see what the expected outcome would be to the SQL that I write. Now I want to show you the actual data for this scenario. I've created two different SQL tables. One's called calendar machine. One's called calendar plant. If we look inside either one of these tables and we'll look inside both, we're gonna see the data represented as it was on the spreadsheet. So if you look here, we've got a calendar ID, a description of what's happening, and then the dates. So one of the yearly maintenance ha happens from July 1st to July 8th, 2023, and then Christmas break is on the same date, 1225. 
And then if we look at the calendar machine and we look at the data inside of there, again, I'm gonna double click on these columns so that they expand so you can see better. You'll see represented in here the machine ID, all right? So, and that could be any machine and then a description of what's happening on the machine and then from and to dates as represented on the Excel spreadsheet. Oh wow, and one more thing that's very critical to show you is the link between the machine and the calendar is a field called calendar ID. So this is in essence pointing the calendar for these machines that's in a certain plant to the same calendar as the plant. All right, so that's gonna be important as we move over and take a look at the view. And here we are in the view. And listen, I try to make things as streamlined as possible for you, so I don't spend a lot of time putting together views and aliens fields. I wanna just show you and explain to you. I'm gonna give you the SQL code anyhow, so you don't have to type all this out or try to keep up with me. So let me just explain this, right? We've got the plant calendar table here. We've got it joined together by calendar ID to calendar machine. Now, the only thing I've done down here is on the from and to dates because they, you know, they both have from and to dates. I'm going to alias the machine ones so that when I execute it, I can tell the difference between the, you know, the, the regular calendar and the machine calendar. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this and it'll bring up the data. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the object explorer and let's just look at the data. I'll turn this off so we can look at the data. And don't worry so much about the test yet because I'm gonna explain that to you in just a moment, but I just want you to see the data. Basically what has to happen is every machine calendar ID date range has to be evaluated against the overall calendar ID or the higher level plant level calendar ID. And so you'll see a lot more entries here because each ID is, main, is, is being evaluated, uh, each machine exception is being evaluated against the plant exception. So as you go down through here, it says, okay, for the yearly maintenance, I'm looking at all the different scenarios and going to show you the pass fail. And then for Christmas break, I'm going to look at all the exceptions and I'm going to give you a pass fail. And the idea being here is as of right now, and we're going to do one real time, there are no overlaps or no fails on Christmas break, we only have failures, and these are re are also represented in the spreadsheet, which I also will uh, put it as a link in the description of the video so that you can have all of this uh, to hopefully help you be successful in doing this. Um, but you, you've, got, you've got all the data right in front of you, and now we can get into the SQL part to help understand that. All right, let's take a look at the SQL and how we get this thing to work. So remember, we're interrogating date ranges between a plant level range and a machine level range. So really all I have here in SQL, so these are our fields and we are aliasing as we saw before the machine dates so that it actually says machine from date so that we know what those guys are. But if we look, here's the secret sauce. Really all we have to do is use a couple of where statements where we take a look at the machine from date at the machine level and compare the from date to the from and to date of the plant level calendar or, right, so these are two separate pieces of logic. We take a look at the machine to date and compare it to the from and to date at the higher level plant. So there's two things happening and they're separate evaluations of the from and to date. Again, what I'm going to do just to make this easy for you is I'm going to take this code and I'm going to upload it um, and I'll give you a link to it in the description so that you can pull this down. I'll also put the tables in the description and upload those so you can grab those. And that should give you everything you need to be successful. This could have just as well been a where statement. So if I grab this logic and I copy it and bring it down here and say where and 
and paste. Now, when I run this, I should just get the fails. And that's what we have. If we look here, fail, 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 fail. And the last thing I want to show you is just a, the dynamic nature of this. So if I go back uh, to the object explorer and I add a new entry in my calendar machine, and let's say it doesn't really matter the machine number, and let's call this recharge, and let's put it as, I'll open this up so you can see what's happening, but we're going to put it on Christmas Day, right? So that'll create an overlap to the plant calendar. So if I just say 12, 25, 23, and I'm not even gonna put anything in the uh, to date, which is another good test of the logic. And then if I come back to the SQL and run it, so F5 to run this guy. Oh, it didn't work because I didn't create the calendar. I didn't allow, allow the join over to the calendar ID. So I gotta put the calendar ID in and again, I don't edit this out because it's good for you to see. Like I have issues too. I've got to test it and make sure everything works right. So now that the calendar ID is in that join, it says, oh, there's an overlap between the Christmas break at the plant level and the recharge happening on December 25th. There you go. Have a great day.